It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, we're preparing ourselves to watch Moon Knight and Moon Morbius. Moon Knight. Uh, I've, been, I've, been very, uh, I've been very into vampires mm-hmm. and moons lately, Yeah. Uh, <laughs> watching a specific set of movies, so I feel like I'm very prepped. You- you are you are right in that crosshair for hot topic right now, Mike. They are they are looking at you and watching what you're seeing. So, uh, be ready for those ads. Uh, Halo comes to the planet Madrigal. Uh, I think you mean family Madrigal. Right? We don't talk about Halo. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, if I've had a nickel for every time someone's made that joke to me this weekend, uh, I'd be a rich man. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, the Joker was almost in Batman. And we'll talk about the restraint they showed Mike and more. <laughs> yeah, uh, tonight it's the magical night, glitz and glam as the Oscars uh, are taking place. Boo. Just a stone's throw away. And uh, we were out getting lunch today and there was like, you know, a big TV inside of this restaurant. And I think they had some sort of like news channel on and they were interviewing somebody. And I saw the Chiron and it's like, why is nobody watching the Oscars? And every year, it's like it's been like the same conversation. I swear, for like the last five years of why nobody watches this program, and there's like half of there's like a certain uh, segment of the country that just like wants like the Los Angeles and the celebrities to just like burn. So they always like feed into that mm-hmm. notion of the Oscars are worthless, and then uh, you have all of, all of the the entertainment news that leans into it and I always just feel like the most obvious answer is the right one which is do, who watches broadcast television any, anymore right mm-hmm. even when I watch broadcast television it's like the day later on Hulu right uh, and on top of that I just want to know the results which I can get from my Twitter feed so I don't think that's necessarily an indictment of specifically the program that's being put on at the Oscars it's just like people got other stuff to well, do like uh, yeah. the CEO of Netflix is competing with Fortnite right now like the Oscars is just like I don't think it has anything to do with the Hollywood elites it, it's just people are watching Bridgerton season two, well, you know, this weekend, yeah. <laughs> not the Oscars. Well, I would also say that they did, I think, made a couple more enemies this year where they moved some of the like sound editing, I believe, right to mm-hmm. um, to be announced during the commercials. Uh, and they were like, you know, you're putting more and more in during the commercials. Uh, so, like, I think some some famous sound editor or someone who maybe who's even in, in, in the running was like, you don't respect our thing. So we're like resigning from the Academy. And well, it doesn't really do anything in the long run. I think, you know, I, we are, we are big fans of like what E3, right. Or the, like the, the mm-hmm. video game awards, like do the Academy awards the same way where you load up tonight with a bunch of reveals, right? Like wouldn't it have been awesome if they're like, Hey, guess what? You're going to see your first look at Thor tonight. Or like, a bunch of these other movie trailers that you're not going to see anywhere else, but during yeah. the event, yeah, I'd tune in. I'd, I'd, I'd hella oh tune gosh. in. But Chris, like, the 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 Thor Love and Thunder crowd, Thor Love and Thunder trends literally every other day yeah. on Twitter for me. Uh, and every so time mad. I go, check, they're so mad. Every time I go check it out, and it's just like you really, you people really need to listen to the Superhero Site podcast mm-hmm. because if you were seasoned listeners of the show, you would know. We are too far away to be getting a trailer for Thor Love and Thunder. Like, we are, I mean, some people might look at some other, like, windows of releases for trailers, but it's like, we got some other Marvel stuff to get through before you're going to get to your Thor Love and Thunder. Like, yeah. just just, ch- just chill just chill out. You, there's yeah. so many other things to we, watch right now. It, so, I, I, I don't know if it's just, like, if it's, like, Taika Waititi stands, you know, that they're just, yeah. like, going, they're just going above and beyond annoying the hell out of me. But just chill out, Thor Love and Thunder people. Well, I think I think you know it is fair. Like we 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 should normally have had one by now. But am I losing sleep over not have having one? No, I'm not. Uh, but like I think everyone's like they're so mad. Where's our Thor Love and Thunder? We're gonna riot. I'm like, no, you're not. You're you're, you're not gonna riot. You're just <laughs> you're just upset in this moment because as you saw Thor Love and Thunder trending on 
Twitter, and and you know how I know we're getting close to a reveal because how, we we, we don't have it in here because it's, it's it's not relevant because we already talked about it months ago is but like the hallmark ornament for Thor for this <laughs> Christmas is coming like was revealed online. I'm like, we know what he looks like. Like, like we we know this is coming. Just we'll we'll get to it when we get to it. And um, you know one of the one of the items here on my list uh, actually. Uh, covers Taika Waititi, so maybe that's because he's in the news right now with a, another show. That's why maybe people are so antsy to to hear more from him in this big project on on the horizon, Mike. Um, but you, you're a man of the night. You 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 <laughs> are loathing holy water right now, uh, and uh, you know uh, loving full moon. So tell me, how far have you made it through the underworld saga? And uh. do tell them. What happened with number three? <laughs> I've nearly completed the Underworld Saga with a one big fat asterisk. Uh, I, I, I brought it up the other week that I'm working my way through this kind of uh, big popcorn uh, franchise that I would say was definitely spurred from the popularity of the Matrix movies back in the late 90s, early 2000s. So uh, I had the anecdote uh, the other week where I was saying they're all streaming on Peacock except weirdly enough for the second one. And uh, if you look these movies up, it's, it's just confusing to follow where they all list because the third movie in the release order of the Underworld franchise is Underworld Rise of the Lycans, which I did not know was a prequel movie to uh, characters that died in the first movie. And it's not streaming anywhere. Like, out of all these movies, I would imagine Underworld Rise of the Lycans is probably, like, the least adored just because, like who really wants to go back in time with uh, prequels. So uh, that one's not streaming, and I haven't seen it. Well, <laughs> I watched the trailer for it on YouTube so I could kind of get a little bit of context yeah. for it. And, and, and it's funny because it it's like, um, you know, Bill Nye, right? Huge, huge actor. Mm-hmm. Michael Sheen was in, in, in hot. He was so hot back then. I think he was coming off <laughs> the Twilight movies. And then they have literally what I call the Kate Beckinsale Walmart version uh, with the actress Rona Mitra, who looks close enough to Kate Beckinsale in this movie that you might well, have thought it was Kate Beckinsale. Well, yeah, and as far as I can tell from a character point of view, like I said, since I hadn't seen it, I don't believe that is supposed to be Kate Beckinsale's character as it's far not. as I yeah. can tell. Because in the very first movie, like, there's some old ass vampire that kills his own daughter because she like is like dating a werewolf and then he kind of adopts kate beckinsale is like his daughter anyway i feel like all this ground is like treaded in flashbacks in like the first and second movies uh so i had not watched underworld rise of lichens but in the trailer it looked like there might be some kind of cool big kind of like battlefield shots maybe kind of a la two towers with some like werewolves running up like a like an old ancient like kind of like uh, castle but uh it's not streaming anywhere so i haven't seen it so, uh, flash forward, I'm now watching the last movie in the franchise, uh, Blood Wars from 2016, and I have to say, I'm running out of steam, Chris. I'm yeah. really running out of steam. I feel like I'm just having these cyclical stories of like, oh, we're in like the fifth movie, it's still just vampires versus werewolves, there's like a new werewolf king, and they're all they're all vying for some sort of a hybrid blood to make themselves stronger, so it's really spinning its wheels at this point in time, but I, at the end of the day, I'm shocked that there was enough pop culture love uh, for all of these movies to get funded. Mm. I mean, a prequel. I mean, what a vanity project, right? A prequel to just so we could get more backstory on some of these characters coming out third in the franchise. I just thought that was uh, pretty surprising. But uh, the last time we brought this up, Chris was saying something like, oh, is Kate Beckinsale even in that movie? Doesn't that movie take place in the past? And I was confused because what I was watching at the time was an underworld movie that takes place 12 years in the future. So you really got to have your wits about you when you're watching these movies because they're they're (laughs) jumping all around. It's hard to keep track. Do your Um, Google before you go into the underworld franchise. Yeah, yeah. but uh, so far (laughs) they have been pretty consistent at making – some pretty cool werewolves, right? You know, when you get on later on in the franchise, they seem to rely a little bit more on CGI. You know, you get further on in the in the history of Hollywood at these movies, and the CGI gets a little bit more affordable. But they still occasionally use lots of physical props, and it's it's fun to watch some of that uh, unfold on screen. So uh, I will be wrapping up Underworld this week. 
And I think I'm going to move on to the Resident Evil franchise. It just seems like the most logical predecessor to this type of movie. All of those are streaming over on HBO Max. So no, don't uh, don't say so. that before you, you Google <laughs> all of them on HBO Max. Because uh, well, I mean, we're at the end of March, so it's always my PSA for the audience, right? <laughs> if there's something that you really want to stream, uh, do a double check and see if it's going to be there the next month. Because sometimes you'll be in the middle of something and it leaves that streaming it's, service in the new month. Well, it's funny because Netflix has like they just launched a new Resident Evil movie, right? Or they are launching a Resident Evil movie. They're launching a Resident mm-hmm. Evil TV show. So I'm really surprised. They've not like brought them all under their umbrella yet, Little, uh, yeah. pun intended, because um, the Umbrella Corporation. Uh, <laughs> but like, I, I mean, I remember watching those evil movies, and I can't wait to hear your journey through <laughs> them as they evolve into yeah. whatever they end up becoming. The only one I've seen is the first one, and I remember, uh, um, I remember it fondly. Yeah. So we'll see how the sequels go. But that is my progress on the Underworld films. Uh, last thing I wanted to mention, uh, this doesn't really need my sounding board necessarily. It was trending on Twitter a couple weeks ago pretty heavily, and I finally decided to uh, dive into it. It's a podcast called The Dead Eyes Podcast. And I may have mentioned this a couple weeks ago, and if I did, I hadn't really gotten far into it. But it's a podcast that's 30 episodes long. I'm halfway into it, so I've really kind of uh, fallen in love with it. And it's all about this actor who was cast in a in a small part in the Band of Brothers TV show. And that episode was being directed by Tom Hanks. And after he was told he had the part, he was fired. And he heard through the grapevine that Tom Hanks fired him because he had quote-unquote dead eyes. So he's going through this whole journey trying to figure out and get to the bottom of, like, why did he get fired? Does he actually have dead eyes? Did anybody actually mean to tell him that? Because that's kind of like a very uh, insulting thing to tell somebody, right? Um, but as the the show has kind of evolved chronologically through these episodes, uh, a lot of, like, really hot Hollywood players – have been falling in love with the show, so it's been very easy for him to get really famous people on his podcast to kind of talk about their journey through Hollywood, their early days, getting fired and hired on different shows and movies. I just listened to an episode where he talked to uh, um, Paul Paul Feig and Judd Apatow in the same episode, and so he's getting like these really big creators. And it, it, I'm just recommending it right now because it seems to be very quintessential kind of Hollywood stories and like a lot of the times on the podcast we're talking about like these big high level movies and these big budgets and what like a producer or a director will do to get these stories across but there's always very small stories at at, at, in the middle of these productions um you know the character who told Spider-Man to do a flip in a Spider-Man Homecoming yeah and he was also and he was also in Shang-Chi uh filming on the bus Oh, yeah, he was, and he's also in the new Apple Plus show, Severance. Uh, but that role he had on Spider-Man was, like, one of his, like, v- one of his first, like, breakout roles, and he wasn't even really credited. He kind of just had, like, that one line, and he is on the podcast as well, and he's interviewed, and they talk about it. So uh, it's just it's just great getting into the weeds of Hollywood. So the Dead Eyes podcast, it, it, it has wrapped up at episode, I believe, 31, and I can't wait to get to episode 31 because they actually get Tom Hanks on the very last episode. Oh, my gosh. I, I, so please And, please and he fires not... him from his own podcast because <laughs> he's got dead eyes. <laughs> please do not spoil it for me if you happen to already know. I, I will get there uh, soon, hopefully, but I'm, I'm very hyped to finally uh, get there. But the Dead Eyes podcast, uh, go check that out. And that's what I've been up to, Chris. There you go. Well, I was finally able to sit down and uh, start watching uh, Our Flag Means Death. Now, I believe there's mm-hmm. 10 episodes. I think that's the whole first season on HBO Max. I yes, don't know. If, correct. Were you able to finish the season? All the way yep, through? we finished okay. it this week. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't finish it yet. We, 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 we made, we made it a big uh, dent in it, but it's always uh, – it, it's just it's just so much fun. It's just a fun journey, right? Like the the main character, Riz Darby, he plays such a, a, a sympathetic – but also like idiotic character throughout the whole thing. <laughs> um, there, there is definitely some blood and guts in this, which is pretty funny um, throughout the whole thing. But I, I really enjoy early on, and, and this, I don't think it's like whenever one of the um, crew members, he's like, yeah, I was like, you know, um, Blackbeard owes me uh, something because I saved his life. And he's like telling the story of Blackbeard being like, he's like, 
a smoke monster instead of like a man. Mm-hmm. I was, and he was talking to it. And I actually, I was impressed with the visual effects first and foremost, but like, it's just very, you know, he's telling the story and Riz Darby's like, Oh my gosh, that's really awesome that he was actually like a smoky pirate kind of thing. And it's just very like innocent in a way, if you will, but like still kind of funny. So, um, yeah, it's, I, it's, I it's good that you're Denver. liking yeah, it's good that you're liking it so early on. I was a little tepid on it at the beginning. The first couple of episodes, I feel like I couldn't quite get into it. Even uh, when Blackbeard shows up, I was still like, okay, where's this going? I felt like it meandered a little bit in the first half of the season. But like it really starts to pick up and head somewhere in the second half. And I, I kind of really kind of started to dig its claws into me towards the end. So it's only going to get even better for you, which is great. But yeah, I could also recommend that show. Yeah, which, uh, I, you know, the first episode I know was at least uh, at least the first three were directed by um, um, Taika Waititi, as it is. So um, um, uh, it's it's got a like you said. I agree. It starts rough, but I know like I I, I think I was like kind of prepped for that anyway. I'm like ah, I know how these like drier shows kind of kind of run. So uh, I'm excited to see how it kind of plays off at the first season. Now, did it get a second season? I I didn't look that up. Um, um, I would be surprised if they didn't. And of course, it's the in this weird world of streaming, especially when you get these big, big names uh, creating a series for a show. Um, I was surprised uh, Taika Waititi was going to be starring in this show as well. I was like, this is a busy man. Does he have time to do this? Like, is this just a limited series? But they definitely set the show up for a second season. So, uh, yeah, I I mean, they definitely want to make more. And I would be shocked if HBO Max does not give Taika a second season. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least the uh, I mean, even if he's less involved, you know, the the, the cast and crew, they're, they're colorful bunch you know i was i was watching it. my wife was kept trying to look up who people were i'm like don't look it up like you're gonna ruin the show uh like <laughs> find something out but like i was like oh my gosh look there's hodor like first episode kind of thing the uh the guy who plays him in game of thrones i was like oh this is fun uh and i know it's like it's full of guest characters so i think that's even even better so uh really excited to finish that up and then the other thing uh we watched last night was i don't know if you got a chance to see this Finally, to streaming uh, is uh, Death on the Nile, the follow-up to uh, Murder on the Orient Express, the Poirot uh, film franchise. Did you yeah did... familiar familiar with the kind of the the relaunch slash reboot or whatever? But I haven't yeah. haven't watched it. So I really liked uh, Murder on the Orient Express. It's got a really good cast, and then Death on the Nile has kind of been buried. Uh, it's got a, you know directed by um, Kenneth Branagh, who's known for Thor One fame, and he's also the main actor Hercule Poirot. Uh, but this was also as uh, starring Army Hammer. Um, so if you know anything about Army Hammer in the news lately, uh, they've tried <laughs> to get rid of him uh, from everything, uh, and he plays such a big role in the film they couldn't really cut around him. Uh, and then um, what's the other actress um, who plays Shuri? In, in Black Panther, who's also had some negative press uh, lately as well. Uh, La- La- Letitia? Letitia, no. right, yeah. Is it yeah, Letitia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, she, she's in it as well. So they've tried to, I think, bury this film a little bit. And I really hope they get a third one because I, I think it's really fun. It's it's um, very interesting because, uh, again, there's a murder uh, on the Nile, but it's got a very eclectic cast of characters, a really um, good good set of actors. Uh, so Where's... Really where are those films streaming? Um, uh, paid pay streaming. I'm sorry, VOD paid. paid uh, oh, okay, VOD. gotcha. Uh, also, Chris Flicks. Uh, so uh, Chris. for 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 those in the know, um, but yeah. Anyway, so I, we, we, me and my wife, we, we uh, had a chance to watch it last night. We we both had a, a great chance. I'm glad this wasn't in theaters because this is one of those movies like they've written these stories before, right? And Poirot had a TV show, I believe, for a while as well. Um, so we're like sitting here theorizing who the murderer is what what's the tricks what's the things the whole time out loud while the movie's playing uh, rather than like you know in a theater like because you're never going to talk in a theater mm-hmm. uh, or at least you shouldn't or get out uh but so like it was really fun to actually like sit there and like throw out theories and ideas throughout the whole thing because you know they you know like yeah someone's getting murdered there's death on the nile obviously and and trying to figure it out throughout the whole thing because at the end you do figure it out like or they do tell you but like it's the, the journey to get there is the fun part. So um, <clears throat> if you like theorizing over uh, whodunit kind of films, uh, this is definitely a, a two-movie franchise I'd recommend to anybody. Um, and again, Kenneth Branagh just melts into the role. Like, he just – he's so good at that. I mean, do you remember he, he was the bad guy in Tenet? Uh, he was uh, mm-hmm. in the second Harry Potter movie. 
a Gilderoy Lockhart, the the mm-hmm. professor. Like, like he's just so good at all this stuff. So it was very fun to to have him in there. So I'd recommend it. Uh, let's jump into the news, Mike. First and foremost, we're going to go back actually pre Thor in the MCU and talk about the Incredible Hulk, uh, a movie not a lot of people have probably watched on their MCU rewatch this <laughs> lately. Uh, the only character to make it out of this so far was General Ross, uh, played by the recently, um, I guess, uh, late uh, William Hurt, uh, who uh, was last seen in Black Widow this year. So <clears throat> he made it out of there, but I, again, uh, he's recently passed away, so uh, sadly we won't have him anymore. But um, they will be having Emil Blonsky, uh, a.k.a. The Abomination, in the She-Hulk show coming up, right? And I believe he was also in, in Shang-Chi, so I, 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 want, I do want to correct that. So that's really cool that they're pulling some of us out of here, but I don't think we'll ever see Edward Norton, Edward Norton or Liv Tyler ever again uh, in the MCU. Unless they do like a Hulk first. What if they do No Way Hulk, <laughs> right? And they have oh all gosh. Eric Bana, Edward Norton, uh, Mark Ruffalo. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? No, I mean, that would be pretty <coughs> wild. But, I mean, it, you know, there's a if you brought that idea up, like just like, you know, two years ago, right? Uh, we would be rolling our eyes, but now it's not so far fetched. No, no, not really. But we have She Hulk coming up, which is you know a successor to the Hulk. But the Incredible Hulk, long story short, will be uh, moving to HBO Max this April. So if you want the full MCU approach, you're gonna have to find your way across three separate streaming platforms, right? <laughs> um, uh, go from Iron Man to on Disney Plus to the Incredible Hulk on HBO Max and the Spider Man movies on I believe they're stars still, right until the the new um yeah, feel good as, in the place as far as we can tell at the moment yeah <coughs> yeah and again i apologize for coughing people i have really bad allergies today i'm dry i have no congestion but i'm dry um i'm trying to cough away from the microphone but the blade movies are also going to hbo max so that's pretty cool um mike so you, you said that uh the uh underworld movies respond uh kind of due to the matrix i think it's a mixture of blade and the matrix the blade tricks uh, movies really kind of hey inspired you're, you're pitching a franchise i'm ready to watch man yeah. vampires and a computer <laughs> yeah Ex- digital vampires oh my gosh i think they had those in the matrix right weren't like vampires like rogue programs or something they had the ghosts. yeah i mean it wouldn't it wouldn't be hard to to imagine yeah we could we could make it more fun but uh anyway uh so uh, hbo max adding some some more marvel movies to their service despite being the home for a lot of dc properties at this time so um is this is this a movie you'd, you'd want to revisit i don't know when the last time you watched it was so uh i mean i almost feel like i did revisit it a little bit when we watched uh what if right mm-hmm. we had a little bit of yeah uh, what's campus? it like to go back in time with a uh, early kind of hawkening so uh yeah it, it could be fun to go back just almost like a, a little bit of um just homework Right. Mm-hmm. Let's remember how this all started out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this was the only reason this is on Disney Plus. It was halfway produced, or at least is it, the distribu- distribution rights are through Universal. So that's why it's not mm-hmm. on Disney Plus. Um, that's why we can't have like a solo Hulk film, I believe, at this point in time. However, uh, Disney has come around, and despite recasting Edward Norton, who I like as an actor, Mark Ruffalo has done a great job since then, since the Avengers. So um, no, no hard feelings there. Morbius. God damn, we are so close to getting this out of our way. Uh, It is this week in theaters. Uh, You have your tickets already, right? (coughs) Yeah, honestly, I forgot that I had them for a little while. Um, We have uh, plans to go get our taxes done (coughs) on Saturday Mm -hmm. next week. And then after our tax appointment, we'll be going to see Morbius. So there's a chance that we've set ourselves up for a really, really bad day. If we owe a lot of money and then this movie just ends up not being good. Then you've paid money uh, to watch it. (laughs) I'm crossing my fingers for 50-50. But I I am hedging my bets. Uh, We got our tickets just, like I said, on a Saturday afternoon. So we're not going to go out of our way on like a Thursday night after work to try to watch this one i'm not too worried about spoilers you know seeping through my feeds for this film Mm -hmm. Uh, i i got the cinemark movie pass um subscription you know like i said a few weeks ago i did the math i made a spreadsheet i figured out that you know if i'm paying the 10 bucks a month you know for one free ticket you know it's really gonna save me money and i had a rollover ticket because i get rollover tickets with it so technically from my point of view my two morbius tickets were free so nice. hopefully that that saves me <laughs> yeah 
I've, I've not got my tickets yet. I'm going to look this week and, and see what I can get. But I don't, I don't feel this is a Thursday and Friday thing. We will be doing our review next week, however, um, for those who may or may not care. The director's just out here just spoiling the shit out of this movie. Like, Oh, really? Yeah, like <laughs> everything. So, like, the ending, and then, yes, there is post credit scenes and everything else. Like, I'm just... I'm just watching this train wreck happen in, like, slow motion. So, like, I, 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 I'm excited for the news after this. I told my wife, I said, hey, babe, this movie is probably not going to be good. I don't know anything just yet, but everything, <laughs> all signs pointing to this is probably going to be a waste of the afternoon. You do not have to go and see it with me. But she's like, well, I want to go with you. You know, I'll <clears> go. <throat> I'll, I'll see the train wreck. So we're we're both prepared. Yeah, yeah. And and that's that's the thing like with it I'm just like I'm like I just want to I just want to knock this out of the park and and just kind of get it out of the way because I think there's there's a lot more stuff around this that, that that's yeah. more exciting and and listen if you're a Jared Leto uh, fan if you love Morbius if you're really into this Spider Man kind of dark villain Sony universe right and you're upset you know that we're taking such a hard uh, angle at it like it, it has only uh the only direction it can go for us this weekend is up yeah. right i have such low expectations that this is probably the best direction the best feeling i could have going into the movie let, let me let me let me preface this a little bit the uh, razzies were yesterday right uh the raspberry mm-hmm. awards preface to the Oscar. uh other than lebron james uh jared leto won worst supporting actor for uh, the House of Gucci last year, so uh, <laughs> he's going to be following up with that award with this movie immediately, uh, and and really, it's just one of those things. Like maybe we're wrong, maybe maybe we'll have a we'll find some redeeming qualities of like ah, there was like five minutes of good stuff in there. Probably it's fine. It's just very very unenthusiastic for this, um, especially after we had such a really good Spider Man beforehand and and, and this. So. Um, hopefully, you know, we, we can find something to enjoy and, and talk about so we're not just in a pissy mood all next week uh, with it. Uh, but it is, you know, they say it's queuing up to make about $50 million opening weekend, which, you know, I think they shot it for uh, – they, they made it a cheap movie anyway. So maybe maybe it'll make some money. I hope it doesn't get a sequel, but <laughs> neither here nor there. On the flip side, this Wednesday, you can wake up and watch Moon Knight uh, on Disney+. Plus. We are finally – in the Moon Knight room, I never, I never thought we'd get here, Mike. I honestly <laughs> never dreamed of a day we get a Moon Knight show starring Oscar Isaac on Disney Plus. Uh, so March has March has been a confusing month because I kept getting the release date for Moon Knight and uh, Halo mixed up in my head. I was like, yeah. I knew they both are at the end of March. So this has uh, been the longest yeah. end of March ever. By, by long time. <laughs> yeah, at the end of last week, I thought I had missed Moon Knight. I was like, mm-hmm. wait, did it come out? Did I miss it? I'm like, nope, just a couple more days. Yeah, a couple more days. So uh, it's coming out six episodes. Uh, that'll, that'll get us up to, I believe, Doctor Strange, if I am correct. Uh, so very, very excited to watch this, um, learn a little bit about it. I, like I said, a lot of the trailers are usually uh, first episode, like first, even first half of the episode. So I'm excited to see kind of what they save for later and what we're not seeing uh, down the road. So uh, very excited to learn about Moon Knight and his uh, powers and abilities. So stay tuned as we'll kind of probably talk about the the intro to him next week a little bit at the end of the episode on the flip side of that uh related to moon knight and we'll tell you how in just a second nova the character that everyone has wanted to be in the mcu since james gunn did guardians of the galaxy one is finally heading to marvel or at least in a pre-production aspect um sabir prezada who is a writer of moon knight has been hired to write this project now we don't know if it's a tv show slash series or a movie at this point however it's a pretty good sign for the character right like kind of a confirmation they're putting some some energy behind putting nova into the the marvel yeah. universe as a whole it it seems like with the kind of level of notoriety of the character uh and the standings of all the kind of characters we have left to be introduced in the mcu I, i'm feeling series that seems to maybe make the most sense of the way mm-hmm. to introduce this character uh, I'm curious what direction they're going to take. Are they going to go kind of more modern Nova with kind of a younger kid that could possibly like tee into a young Avengers, or is this going to be uh, the older version mm-hmm. of the character? How cosmic is it going to be? Uh, you know, and if it's like we've yet to really see much cosmic stuff outside of the Eternals that deals with space, and even when the Eternals were cosmic, Gu- they were Guardians, very. Maybe? 
they were very Earth. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Yeah, Guardians has always kind of been the the the, the space version. Even like Captain Marvel, yeah. so much of that movie takes place on Earth. So we've really only been exploring space with Guardians. So it might be kind of interesting <laughs> to explore it with Nova. It, but you know, we, we do have the Marvels movie coming out, and I could see that obviously being in space as well. And then yeah. we have you know. Um, uh, uh, I kept saying, I kept thinking like Nick Cage. Thor, Love, and Thunder will probably be in space. Guardians in space. Secret Invasion a little bit. Uh, Yeah, Thor Thor Ragnarok had its space uh, moments for sure. But it's still very much heavily in kind of the... um, It was on a planet. In the James Gunniverse, if you will. Yeah. So I I will tell tell you, Nova is an interesting character. There's two versions. There's the older, richer writer character who has history with the Guardians of the Galaxy in the comic books. And then there's the newer one... um, I just had his name and I lost it, but he he's been more in the the cartoons, the, the Spider Man animated shows, so on and so forth. I think there's opportunity for both of them to exist, because we we have a, a really interesting opportunity with Nova, because we met the Nova Corps in Guardians One, right? We know who the Nova uh-huh. Corps are. Uh, a lot of them were actually wiped out from the uh, Power Stone and um, Ronan, but you know even more so when Thanos went and got the Power Stone. Uh, from yeah, from Nova, he wiped and, out the Nova Corps. So and that kind of happens somewhat off screen. Yeah, if you will. So maybe <coughs> there could be a bit of a flashback in a Nova series where we th- see Thanos like show up and like clear ranks, right? You know, yeah. only a few uh, survived, or you have some like kind of scattered there, to the wind. So there's definitely a story you can tell here. Yeah, and in the comic books, Richard Rider was actually the last Nova. The Nova Corps were destroyed, and he was the last one. They have this power called the World Mind, and it was in, like, it transferred itself to his helmet. It was like a computer system, right? So mm-hmm. he had the World Mind with himself, and they, they rebuilt the Nova Corps that way. So I think it would be interesting to start with, like you said, with that Thanos destruction, right? And, like, mm-hmm. how do the Novas come back over, you know, five years of the blip, and then the return of Thanos, and Captain Marvel out in space? What, what does the Nova Corps look like, and who is Nova uh, at that point? Probably, I would say, a Richard Rider survivor and then he's got to train a younger kid because it was it's kind of like green lantern they're chosen to to become the the nova core or whatever so um there, there's a lot of opportunity i think it's great i think uh, like you said with the writer of moon knight which is a series writing this is probably a series right he's probably writing maybe, maybe a small event series like a maybe a three mm-hmm. issue to introduce him before he comes into guardians three i doubt but never know down the road Spider-Man No Way Home is still making money, Mike. Uh, it currently passed the $800 million domestic mark, which Ooh. is fantastic. Uh, that is now the third highest release ever domestically. Um, ahead of Avatar, but behind Star Wars and I believe Endgame. At the end, end, end of the day. So... Um, I was looking up the uh, – because I feel like that 800,000 is a number I remember seeing for the domestic run of uh, Black Panther. Um, but that was that was known for being very successful domestically. Black Panther ended up making <coughs> $1.3 billion worldwide. $700 million domestic gross was uh, bigger than Infinity War and $678 million domestically. So, yeah, it's, it's doing very, very, very good because the last time I feel like I remember – like I said, a, a domestic headline coming through was Black Panther. So yeah, yeah. I Boy, mean, it's got it's got legs. It's got eight legs, is what it's, it's got. got. It's got <laughs> spiders' legs, uh, definitely yeah. for sure. Well, it, it's great. I mean, like it's on digital already. People, I think it's like one of the biggest digital releases ever, or at least in a long time, with people purchasing um, Spider-Man: No Way Home. Uh, the DVD comes out and the uh, Blu-ray comes out in a couple weeks, so uh, it's got some room to make some money there. I mean, this is just uh, just a knockout of the park. You know, uh, all all around, and um, I I think I think it's great. I think, like we said, we we had a really good time with it. Probably one of the better best Spider-Man movies ever, uh, and it shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have been that good, but it sits on like twenty years of of uh, of, of a franchise. So uh, fantastic! I need to go back. I want to rewatch the end of the movie. Um, the the uh, the I guess you know the nighttime swinging scenes uh, at the very mm-hmm. end of the movie. Just kind of see what everything looks like, but. Uh, be very very excited. I think my wife rewatched it last week, and I was out of the house or doing something for like a couple hours, and she's like, "I'm gonna watch Spider Man." I'm like, "Damn it, I wanted to watch Spider Man." <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so be it. I think I think that's great. Good good job, Spider Man, and um, you know everyone everyone involved over there. I am just 
chomp at the bit to see Doctor Strange, Mike. Like, I, I feel like this movie has so many questions and so many potentials. Uh, you know, it, uh, opportunity. You know, we've got a potential Illuminati, multiple universes, uh, zombies, whatever. It's, it's got a lot going on here. And uh, the current rumor is that the Multiverse of Madness it will be around two hours and 28 minutes long, tying it with Spider-Man No Way Home for length. Uh, so that's pretty good, right? That's a that's a good long movie to fill in a lot of the questions we'll probably have along the way. Uh, yeah, I would say um, not the sweet spot for a movie. I, I think the sweet spot for a film is like really kind of two hours, 90 minutes, depending on the type of movie it is. But uh, you don't really start to run into, I would say, categorical issues until you're like Batman and you're running hmm. close to three hours long. Then you really got to prove to the audience as they, they should be in their seats for three hours. But I think two hours and 28 minutes, I think we can put up with that because I feel like we're going to get thrown a lot, a lot of different places, a lot of different, a lot of different story yeah. characters, versions of strange, maybe some cataclysmic events that uh, really shape the MCU uh, moving forward. Yeah, I, I, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, like I said, we don't know the, the, how many universes is he going to go across what what does it look like? You know, Wanda's involved. You know, there's uh, America Chavez. We've got the um, Gargantos slash Shuma Gorath looking dude. Uh, how how far is this movie going to stretch, and what what's it going to do? And uh, you know, I would I would hate for them to rush through everything, but at the same time, I feel like it's going to be a very very brisk pace, regardless of what mm-hmm. we what we think, because there's just so much going on here. And um, I, I think you know, two hours and twenty eight minutes. I, this probably includes credits. If I was a betting man, um, probably pretty pretty good i think for this uh you know dr strange he's not had his own movie since 2016 um so i i'm glad to see they're kind of given given him and sam raimi some some time to just have some fun with this uh i do think i do am curious what bruce campbell's cameo is going to be right like he he always cameos in in sam raimi's movie so Mm -hmm. um maybe maybe we'll see the other thing in the news that popped up today is the avatar 2 trailer is apparently tied to Doctor Strange's release. So the first time we'll see the Avatar 2 trailer in theaters will be with Doctor Strange, which seems about oh par for gosh. the course. I <laughs> At this point in time, we brought this up a lot, but it's going to be a blast from the past from a lot of people, right? Like, <laughs> it'll be weird because it, at first it's probably not going to seem like a sequel. It's going to seem like, oh, are they rebooting Avatar? Like, no, this is a sequel. It just took a really long time to come out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to say, I was trying to pull up uh, the actor uh, for um, the main actor in that Sam Worthington. What in the hell has he been in lately? Uh, right? Like, he was like in everything for a while. He was in Avatar, he was in Terminator, he was in Clash of the Titans. And then I just didn't really hear from him anymore. So, uh, my, I, like, this is this the movie he's been working on for five years? I don't know. He was in, like, cryo sleep. Uh, he was, like, really, really method acting yeah. for a space film. Oh yeah, pro- who who knows? Maybe he's been like had his mind transferred to the body of a genetically engineered Navi. They they've really made this <laughs> in real life. It's more of a documentary at this point than an actual movie. But uh, I pull up his filmography. Apparently, he's been in some movies. Um, nothing I've watched uh, at all lately. So um, yeah, I guess so. We'll we'll see what this looks like. I'm interested to see what it looks like. Right? He's James Cameron, you can't sleep on him. He's always doing something um, to, to break box office records or push the filmmaking, raise the bar, as South Park said. So uh, <laughs> very interesting to see what it looks like and, and what they're doing here on this franchise, what, 13 years later after the first one came out. So um, buckle up, buckaroos. You're in for a treat. Halo finally landed on paramount plus this week mike after years and years of waiting it's finally here uh episode one uh it's a weekly show on paramount plus i um was able to watch it on thursday i'm very excited when it, when it dropped it's gonna be every thursday for i believe eight nine weeks maybe i think nine episodes uh you were able to watch it today is that correct you were yes you, i told I, I told everyone i was gonna watch it on paramount plus with the uh ad supported paid version uh, and I was actually kind of surprised that they left all of the full like commercial breaks in through this. I would have thought at least for the first episode <laughs> during the first week, they would go commercial free just to really get people hooked no matter what plan they were on. But nope, 
commercials uh, all the way through it, but I was able to uh, I was able to make it through to the end. Yeah, well, yeah, that's good. And it's about it's about an hour long, right? Is that my my? Yeah, if f- I remember 58, 58 minute runtime. Yeah, fifty eight minutes. So it's about an hour with with credits and everything. Um, I I am a, a Halo person. You know this, Mike. We've talked about it on the show. I play the games. I've read the books. I've got the comic books. I've got some of the encyclopedias on my shelf over there. Uh, it, it is it is the world I live and breathe. So um, I, I've tried to remove some bias from it. However, you remained radio silent on this. Uh, mm-hmm. I'd be very interested to hear what you thought of the show. Being someone who's perused Halo games as a player, but not in a long time. Yeah, perused the games, not so much the the lore. Uh, looking forward to the series mainly just due to the the history of the franchise and also kind of the sordid past of trying to adapt this to film for the longest time it was going to be a a feature film series that microsoft was going to have its hands in early on in hollywood neil blomkamp was connected to it at Mm -hmm. one point in time so it has a season history in hollywood so to finally see it come to fruition yeah you kind of got to watch it just to see where see where it's going uh gave it a watch today uh it was it was interesting uh it felt you know a, a little rough at times visually but sometimes I felt like it really excelled. It's this kind of uncanny valley where you're used to seeing like highly polished like cinematic cutscenes in video games, right? And then now you're kind of seeing the live action version version of it with Master Chief. Um, There's a big opening battle set piece where you get to see uh, the Spartans really uh, flex their muscles. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're full CG characters, sometimes they're humans in suits. Sometimes it's a computer animated character jumping up and around on ledges and cars and stuff. Uh, sometimes it's just a close up shot of a you know a dude in a costume. Uh, the weapons get more of a I would say kind of like close up uh, uh, feature than you yeah. usually see in like a show. Right, usually kind of in science fiction, you know these are like disposable items that they're just kind of tools that are used. But since they know like gamers are intimately familiar with all of these weapons, yeah. they give them kind of like the time to kind of be featured. I think. There's like pistols, assault rifles, a Battle few rifles, covenant, yeah. a few could, covenant weapons as yep. well. Um, and I don't do, know. Do if you this like is a, going do you like a turret to... carried around because they carry a turret around? <laughs> yeah, they carry a turret. Um, I don't know if this is going to stick around or if this is more of like an Easter egg. But they do kind of a a POV shot from <laughs> inside of the helmet. Which I, you know, is interesting um, from like a filmmaker's point of view. But I thought the UI, the fake UI that they put up in the helmet, looked by far worse than what you see in the video mm-hmm. game. So I was like, if you're gonna replicate something from a game, you got to either do it different or better, uh, not 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 worse. But uh, the the story direction was interesting, and I'm sure you'll be able to talk on that more from the differences from the game yeah. to the uh, TV show. But you know, I so far I would say I'm intrigued. But I was thinking about it today. This is a very old franchise at this point in time, right? Like Halo is 2001. what cl- close to twenty, like no it, twenty oh, it, twenty one years old. Right? Halo Infinite dropped on on the twentieth. The multiplayer dropped on twentieth anniversary. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you think. That since it's a video game, it's a new property. Like, no, this is this is old lore, right? So they are actually kind of fighting against this idea of a lot of maybe some of the original sci-fi uh, tro- tropes that they invented in the video game are kind of old by this standard, yeah. right? We've seen them in other versions. So even though they might be being true to some parts of the Halo video game, some of these conventions are kind of old and rot by now. You know, we saw that a little bit in kind of the Scarlett Johansson Ghost in a Shell movie. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times when you're adapting kind of like these classic, um, these uh, sci-fi stories. But I would say my interest is peaked. I am curious where it's going to go. Uh, like you said, the, the, they seem to be taking a new angle. Uh, a lot more characters are featured in this. And I feel like the memories I have of playing Halo, it's very much just Master Chief Cortana almost 100% of the time, even in the cutscenes and stories. Uh, but we are actually getting some other additional characters fleshed out with Master Chief yeah. not in the scene at all. So I would say a solid... B. Yeah. Uh, I would grade it as a B, not a B plus, not a B planet. Uh, a solid B for the for the kind of pilot episode. Yeah. I, I'll try to keep up with it in the, for the next couple of weeks. Hopefully, you can grab me a little bit more. Mm-hmm. 
I I agree. I, I think I wholeheartedly agree. I think my my points uh, where I would give it a B are probably a little different than yours. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like sci-fi TV shows, science fiction, you know, space, aliens. That's that's where, where I, I really, you know, I really dig my teeth into. And I think as a sci-fi thing, it's just kind of generic, right? Um, it, it's not anything new. It's not anything really interesting either. It feels like you said, like these may have been things 20 years ago that were hot and new, but now it's just like, well, maybe, maybe like, you know, this is, this is fine. This feels like any other kind of really sci-fi thing. There's an aliens invasion, humans need help. So some super powered humans show up to, to help fight them. Um, and what, what's really interesting is like, there is hardly any game similarities here at all. If I, if I was to like to just break it down with you, like completely. Are you um, saying story wise? Yeah. Story wise. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, the the uh, idea of Spartans being made uh, there's there was like I, the the our Spartans were made to actually fight um, human insurrectionists which is is a little right and then the aliens come along and fight the aliens but um, that's kind of where it ends um, you know Master Chief we've never seen him take his helmet off in the video games very huge point in this this episode <laughs> is like we see who this is and and very much the actor Pablo Schreiber we'll talk about him. A little bit. Yeah, there are four other Spartans. Uh, they are controlled by Dr. Catherine Halsey, who is actually in the in in the games and in, in the books. She is the creator of the program and some other stuff. Uh, the other characters, uh, Captain Jacob Keys and his daughter Miranda Keys, um, are in the game, but they're not. Um, they're not related to Halsey in the way that this this the show does, right? They, they're actually not related at all. They're just different people in the in the military. So. They're already taking some liberties there, and that's fine. doesn't bother me. There are more characters in the Master Chief than just being a, a faceless soldier, right? We've not even got to Cortana yet, which is interesting. I think, you know, I was expecting to see that earlier on, so we're going to see that a little later. Uh, the aliens, um, I, I, I actually didn't expect a full... Uh, prophet alien having a conversation later on in a dialect uh, that and that alien looked very good i yeah. would say the the animations the 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 model the character the voice i i would say worked on pretty much every level i was very surprised yeah how good it looked. And, and and i think i agree i i think i noticed less cg for the humans or the the alien or the the spartans because i'm used to playing the video game so i'm like oh they're already cgi in my mind anyway um, but the alien, the covenant, the, the elites looked a little wonky in some places. Um, but in other times they look great, right? Some of the elites look great. I, I'm very interested to see where the story is going to go and how unique it's going to be. Uh, it ends on a very interesting note. Um, but I'm, I'm still, like you said, I'm hooked. I want to know more. I'm just not, you know, in love with it. Like I am with the, the regular Halo lore, which yeah. I, 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 I can't put my finger on what's different. Maybe it's just because this is new and we've only had one episode and I just don't know it all yet, right? We're going to get more revealed as we go, but like, I just really like the other stuff a little better, Um, but it doesn't hurt us as a whole. It just feels different. Yeah, And I wouldn't necessarily fault uh, the show itself, but it is going to be compared to other properties that are very similar at the current time. Like if you have a, 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 like a masked protagonist in, in space armor flying around, like you're going to be compared pretty heavily to The Mandalorian. Yep. Uh, also, it seems like they're courting the storyline of kind of maybe children being taken from their families at a young that, age and kind of turned into soldiers. That like, lines up with the, the actual story, though. That, that one yeah, it, but, yeah, but also whether or not you could argue kind of who got to it first or even yeah. how original that is to begin with, but The Witcher kind of started yeah. handling that storyline two years ago. So it's kind of like... People have beaten them to the punch, even though they may kind of "quote unquote" have claim over that story, yeah. like in pop culture and science it's, fiction. So they're they're fighting yeah. a lot of other popular things out there. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's not necessarily like fighting over ownership. It's like who's going to tell it better at the end of the day, right? Like, wh- mm-hmm. how how does your story you know affect your character? And I see I see definitely see some some interesting things here. And um, I I want to see more. I think there's a lot of hopes. I've seen some trailer scenes that have that did not pop up in this. Uh, uh, so like, you know, you're familiar with the hunters, right. Of, of, of Halo Lord, the bigger guys who are te- mm-hmm. with the shields. I'm going to see them 
the jackals, the grunts. I want to see a lot more of the Covenant than just like the two aliens we saw in this yeah. one episode. I, I am happy that we do get to see the actor of Master Chief. I think humanizing yeah. pretty much everything across the board is exactly what you need to do for a TV show. Because in a video game, you want to embrace the main character. It's probably one of the biggest reasons why Link in the Zelda games still does not have his own voice because you're embodying the character. You're going on the adventure. But we're not going on the adventure in this TV show. We're not controlling anything. <laughs> this is not a Netflix interactive series, right? We are here to watch and see the story unfold. So I yeah. think it's smart. We need to empathize <laughs> with the characters a little bit more. And, and Pablo Schreiber, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm mostly uh, known from American Gods. He's been in other projects, uh, you know, for, for a long time. And I think he does a great job. I think he plays a good Master Chief. He's built like him, right? Like, in that mm-hmm. suit, he looks like him. Uh, but apparently, lately, he has had uh, discussions with Marvel, uh, possibly on playing Wolverine, even, in the upcoming MCU. Uh, uh, as I mean... I, I could see it. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be terrible. <laughs> uh, it's funny. His uh, half brother Lou Schreiber uh, of Ray Donovan fame was actually Sabretooth in the X Men <laughs> Origins Wolverine movie. Keep it in the family. Yeah. So uh, well, it'd be, it's, I think you know that's just, that's just an interesting thing. Uh, they're they're both you know I think they're both great actors and it'd be great. So I want to see what he does with Master Chief. I think uh, I'm interested to see the other Spartans. I love the idea of other Spartans. Their specialties, more weapons. And, uh, you know, I, there's, there's a little opportunity here, and I just hope they don't, you know, squander it with uh, by pulling back maybe some of the budget for, for this. Because it's Halo. You need science fiction. You need spaceships. You need aliens. You need battles. Let's let's see this happen yeah, continually. And and uh, I'll be following this. You know, I have Paramount Plus for the next year, so I might as well buckle up while I, while I watch it. So um, we'll, we'll keep you guys posted. Again, Solid B, you don't have to know Halo to get into it. But if you do, those little Easter eggs, like Mike said, do pay off when you're looking at like, oh, I know that gun, or hey, I know what's going on here a little bit. It is brutal. Can I just say one more thing? This show is brutal right out the gate, like the way the blood and destruction is on those humans. Yeah, there is early on dismemberment, that which is going to make <laughs> me kind of sound like a psychopath, but I was kind of happy to see it, right? Like, yeah. okay, well, we're actually kind of depicting some brutality here. <laughs> like, like the aliens are literally ruthless killers, and they're not just like... Oh, we're off screen, or we're painting the camera away while they, while they yeah. kill them. Like we're we're showing it, whether you like it or not. And um, yeah, I, I expect to see some more later on. So, uh, Halo now streaming on Paramount Plus. I think it was also uh, I pull up another uh, link here. Uh, Halo is the most watched original series on Paramount Plus, and I was trying to think of what other shows they had. Uh, Star Trek, I think, is the only mm-hmm. other originals I could think of on there that I I remember. So, um. Who, who wouldn't want to watch Halo? That's that's for sure. Obi Wan Kenobi, the show coming out soon, uh, May twenty fifth. Uh, the Empire, a, a bounty hunter from the Empire Strikes, Strikes Back, is said to appear in the show, and I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be Zuckus or Forlom. And do you know who either of those two are? If I said that? I, I had I had to look it up, but once I saw them. Um... I was like, oh, it's the buck It's like the bug-eyed people. Yeah. I don't know if they're helmets or they're androids or what exactly is going on people, but the, they're the two <laughs> bounty hunters that kind of look like flies. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's funny because the one leaked episode of uh, the, that animated Star Wars show that they're never going to release, right, uh-huh. uh, focuses on Zuckus and Forlom uh, taking over uh, that diner from that forearm guy uh, in, the, mm-hmm. in the second one. But no one can tell them apart because they both look the same. Like, which one's Zuckus and which one's Forlom again? So <laughs> it's actually funny you mention that because, like, they look they look literally like the bug people there with their mm. little eyes. But um, my guess is if you were going to put bounty hunters, I, I, I don't know, but, like, these seem like the easiest ones to put in there, right? Like, you could literally put anyone in these outfits if you're going to bring a bounty yeah. hunter in. Well, I mean, like, it looks like even, uh, like, uh, you know, I did a quick little Google and there's a whole, like, um, comic book series called star wars war of the bounty hunters yes. and there's at least one issue that features uh both of them so uh mm. maybe we'll get both of them a two for one special yeah they i think they've been known to work together maybe and that's why the episode was there um but like yeah i, I like I said we're not gonna get boba fett right that would be overkill lately um so i think i think these guys would be pretty pretty interesting to to include in there we'll see we'll see how that pays off uh when that show drops next next month the Batman, Mike. I've been sitting on this. Uh, we we, I sent it over to you. Uh, the the director was Matt Reeves. Released an unused deleted scene of where Batman visits the Joker. Uh, 
And this isn't like a 30 second cutscene or like something that's unfinished. This is a full finished five minute scene that they've even color graded. Uh, there might be music in it. I don't remember. Uh, completely in 4K and like high quality with Barry Kogan or Keegan, however you say his name, as the Joker, Mike. And um, wow is about all I can say. Just, just wow. Yeah, you sent it to me, and when I was watching it, I was I almost thought like, oh, this is going to be removed from the internet, but then later I found out that it was kind of an official release. But yeah, an entire scene. Uh, it seems to be at some point maybe halfway through the film when Batman's trying to you know catch the Riddler. There's kind of like a Hannibal Lecter, Silence of the Lambs-esque scene between him and Joker where he kind of wants some uh, insight on his thoughts. And uh, I would say it was smart to remove this for, for three reasons. Uh, first reason, runtime. Movie was already yeah. hella long. We didn't need it to be any longer. Uh, reason number two, I would say it under really undercuts the scene that we get with Batman and the Riddler yeah. later on in the film, right? No, uh, you know, I'll do my best not to spoil it. Uh, but I feel like that would really undercut it, you know, if we had already been to Arkham. Uh, right, yeah. and we had already kind of had this interaction because the whole time I would I would be watching that Riddler scene, I would be thinking, "Oh, where's the Joker? Is he going to pop up? Is he listening? I can't wait to see Joker, 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 Joker!" Because it's such a imposing character, right? right. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, uh, number what did, did I say? Three, three. things. You three. <laughs> You've got two. I'm sorry, we'll go back. To two. <laughs> if I think of the other one, I'll bring it up. But well, at least those two. I think. I think. Uh, I, I also think on on the flip side, undermining like this would have stolen the show from the movie. Right? This is what anyone would have talked about in the movie. Like, mm-hmm. oh, the Riddler, yeah, it's fine. But did you see the Joker? What what is it? So it it seems like this scene, whether it's canonical or not at this point, Batman fought the Joker in his year one, and they've they've come to a to a, uh, you know put the Joker in there, and uh, whether he likes that, Batman at least respects his thought process on, on, on being a, a, you know a killer and a psychopath but the look of, of this Joker is very I think the the highlight of this thing that everyone's kind of taken mm-hmm. out of this like he is a uh, very much a, possibly some sort of uh, genetic defect in him he's got very spotchy or I guess spotty yeah. green hair yeah deformities who knows yeah. I mean this could be uh, a, an outcome of falling into a vat of acid a yeah. deformity uh, maybe uh, th- maybe Batman pushed him off a train or something he mm. is messed up I think there might have been a, even been a close up on like staples in his like scalp or something like yeah, that yeah he, he's got some like you know some surgery and like you know like he's been stitched together a little bit if you will yeah. looks like um, over, yeah. over I really years. enjoyed the, the camera work of the scene because you slowly slowly start to get more and more details of the Joker's face and then at the very end you, you kind of get a reveal of what he looks like but it's still not totally clear but yeah. you do kind of get an idea of what this Joker is supposed to look like and I thought the performance was great, uh, but I do remember what my third thing was, and that's is it's kind of um it's kind of a a, a very uh, trope scene, right? Yeah. Where uh, somebody goes to ask another villain on advice, and they say like, "Oh, you're not a, we're not so different, you and I." Kind of one yeah. of those things. Like, how many times are we gonna see this scene? So, uh, another reason to keep yeah. it from the movie. Uh, overall, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Like, I'm not I'm not sad it was not in there. Uh, but just I do sense the care and the craftsmanship that went into this scene. Um, mm-hmm. Like it, it's 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 not a Jared Leto Joker, right? At all. Uh, the, it's not even um, a Heath Ledger Joker. But I feel it respects the character a little bit more. It, it keeps him, you know, mystique. It shows he's not dumb. He's not smart. Or he's not dumb. He, he's a smart person. You know, maybe deranged, but like he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. And, you know, they didn't really, you know, like, it's not in your face. It's not, we're trying to be wild. It feels like this guy could exist in this universe a little bit. And, uh, again, the actor did a great job. The laugh is even pretty good uh, mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Like, it, it just, it, it feels like they, they, if they were going to include it, they were going to do it their way and do it right and not be, you know, this wasn't going to be something we all groaned about seeing on the, on the theater, even if it was included, right? Um, so I, I do respect them for doing that, but like you mentioned in our in our one-off stats, like could, can you imagine the restraint from the director and the higher ups at Warner Brothers being like, yeah, put the Joker in everything, dude. Like, yeah, 
Because it just kind of seems like gold, right? The Joker's hot. Definitely got to put him in your movie. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot of respect. <laughs> yeah. So, that's I, I, I applaud them for that. And I've got the link to the Vimeo 4K version uh, in uh, our show notes if you guys want to check that out. It's a good who, full five I, minutes. Who knows? I mean, maybe that was a deal put in place. Like, oh, we can – we can cut it from the movie, but we're going to release it officially, mm-hmm. you know, X number of days when the movie's out, you know, to kind of keep the buzz going. Yeah, and we're, we're only, I think, three weeks, uh, two and a half weeks away from it hitting HBO Max anyway. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, this is how you keep nothing against the Batman, probably making money. I've just not heard anything about the Batman since like the, the what, the second week it kind of came out, mm-hmm. right? Like Spider-Man's been in the news almost every week, but Batman has not. So, um I don't know. Nothing against it. Just doesn't seem like it's got the 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 water cooler talk that Spider Man does. But we'll see. <clears throat> the Gotham Knights TV show is still coming, and actor Misha Collins, uh, who's known as playing I believe Castile on Supernatural, has joined it as Harvey Dent slash Two Face in this TV show. So it looks yeah, like they're I trying did. to at least cast some, uh, or at least put another uh, Gotham character in here other than the Penguin or the joker at least in the show yeah. right not too familiar with the with the actor because i don't watch supernatural but yeah he, he looks like a dude that could play you know a, a harvey dent so yeah not too not too wrong here also uh i'm sure this actor comes with its own fan base right especially yeah. over at at the cw so this could uh be strategic casting in in two different ways yeah yeah we're gonna we're going to bring in the, that Supernatural. Uh, I mean, this is what probably Berlanti, Berlanti production still, right? So, um, yeah, bring, bring in the Supernatural now that that's ended. Lastly, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, hit with a big delay till quarter one of next year, Mike. Are you trying to tell 14. me a video game was delayed? That never happens. Chris. Yeah, I know. I think, the, I mean, they, I think Warner Brothers got really, really, um, uh, I guess antsy when they announced both Suicide Squad, Kill Just League, and what was it? Oh, Gotham Knights, the other one. Uh, Gotham Knights seemed a little more farther along than this one. I didn't see a lot of gameplay. Uh, I'm excited for this one probably more than Gotham Knights if I was straight up front because, you know, you get to play some Suicide Squad members and you're literally fighting the Justice League and, and, and Brainiac. So I'm very excited to see this. But, like, you know, I, when they announced both of them coming out the same year, that seems very overzealous uh, still, even in 2022. Um, a lot of games, you know. Halo Infinite's getting a lot of flack for for its lack of content for releasing. Uh, what other games have been delayed lately? I feel like a bunch of other games were delayed. Um, who knows? But like, yeah, I, I think you know, in in the video game world these days, um, it's better just to probably play... underpromise and overdeliver. But we're not getting that. Just go play Elden Ring. Yeah, I've been playing for like forty hours, and I I think I'm still kind of in like the first quarter. Of the, of the game, so I will probably finish it by the time it, this game comes did out. Did I talk last week about me playing Dark Souls for the first time? I know we did, but like I started Dark uh, Souls Remastered on PS5. And yeah, you did, uh, you were talking before we started recording the podcast last week that you were like, what is going on? I don't get it. I, I, it's, I, I will probably learn it, but like, boy, they don't hold your hand in these games. They're like, yeah, yeah hopefully you figure it out because uh, yeah. well, you're, you're going well, to. As I'm and as I mentioned, too, that game, that kind of re-release, that's kind of proto from Soft. That's a very early version, even though it's kind of been, like, upscaled and everything. Yeah. Uh, it's still very early kind of game design, which I'm sure it's still great. I, I haven't personally played it. Uh, but they've definitely learned things along the way. And um, they 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 do quality of life updates, I noticed. There was a recent uh, patch for Elden Ring that got a lot of buzz out there online. But mm-hmm. one of the patches was just like a nice thing of like, oh, when you talk to an NP- NPC and they give you like a side quest on like this open world map, you know, we're just going to put like a, just a small little simple icon on your map of showing like where you talk to them. It's just like, okay, that nice that, that's a nice little... Yeah. Uh, you know, quality of life update, but you know, not really holding your hand, just helping you remember where the hell they were. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little uh, some some real world player feedback definitely helps guide that game, guide games a little mm-hmm. bit more. Um, with that, so yeah, I, I um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, like I said, that game's out and uh, it's single player, and you can just just bite right into it, have a have a good time. I believe also, and we didn't say this last weekend, the new Mario Kart tracks are out for Mario Kart Eight for Switch. Um, if you're looking to play those, so remasters of ones that are on like older games or like the mobile games but like if you like mario kart and you want some new content it's i've out there. heard the new kirby game is mm-hmm. the new hotness 
he can like envelop objects, not like just a suck them up. Yeah, yeah. He, so it's like a, he can put his skin suit on different yeah. things. It's freaky. I, I saw some TikTok videos of some gameplay, and it looks pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, so the, you go play that. You know those big circular uh, car blocks they have in front of Targets, so cars can't drive into them. Mm-hmm. They 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 cover those with Kirby uh, things here in town. Like they put like oh those are gonna get stolen. So like <laughs> all the Target like uh, little little red balls are now Kirby because of like whatever's uh, over. That's fun. Yeah. Well, video games are good they're good times um that's it for the news this week mike i again i apologize to everyone for me coughing randomly throughout this i've tried to mute my mic as much as i can uh but sometimes it doesn't help but um but yeah we're gonna go queue up for this week we're gonna come back next week again with morbius and moon knight and uh you know some more discussion so if people want to know more about what we're doing what you're up to where can they find you at Oh, they can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, where can they find you? <laughs> you can find me on Twitter, Valdan, V A L D A N, or Instagram, Valdan87. If you want to know about the show, what we're doing, and listen to those reviews next week, where can they get that at? Oh, all you got to do is visit Superhero Slate. Dot com. That is the Wayne Manor of Superhero Slate. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to fine podcasts. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. We love hearing from you. Reach out if you uh, if you want to tell us what you thought about Halo, what you think about uh, Moon Knight that's coming out, even Morbius. So much to talk about. The, the, the year is really starting to heat up which is really great and fantastic for us here at the podcast. And we love our super fans. So if you want to be a super fan of this here fine show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with it. What did I, what do I say at the end all the time? Share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy. And we will be here every week, folks. That's right. We will see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to subscribe.